The healing brush tool works very similarly to the spot healing brush tool. The big difference is that with the spot healing brush tool that we learned about in the previous video, you don't need to do anything except for click or click and drag or paint over the area you want to heal or you want to fix. The healing brush tool requires one additional step. You have to start uh, have to select a target area. If you push the option or the alt key on your keyboard, your cursor will change to crosshairs and then you can select a target. And the way that the healing brush tool works, similarly to the way the spot healing brush tool works, is it takes these pixels and it blends it with the bad pixels, so we'll call them good pixels and bad pixels. It takes good pixels and it blends it with bad pixels to kind of subtly remove imperfections in an image. With the spot healing brush tool, Photoshop samples pixels around your brush stroke. But that doesn't always work. What if you have an area that needs to have a, a pimple removed that has hair hanging over it from someone's forehead? And when you use the spot healing brush tool, Photoshop keeps picking up the hair and making a repeated pattern of the hair and you don't want that. And so with the healing brush tool, when you select the target area, you're selecting where you want the good pixels to come from. And so you say, these are where good pixels are, so blend these good pixels, my target area, with the bad pixels to remove it from the image. And so we're going to look at that same image with the lady um, that we just fixed the hot spot on her nose. And this time we're going to try to fix imperfections on her chin and around her mouth. And in particular, the imperfection around her mouth here in the middle, it's really hard to use the spot healing brush tool there because when you use the brush and you sample pixels around it, it could pick up her teeth or it could pick up her hair from the outside. And so we're going to use this, the healing brush tool now. So let's zoom in first. So this is the same image. I haven't closed it. It's still open from my last demo. And now I want to get rid of this blemish down on her chin. If we switch to the healing brush tool instead of the uh, the spot healing brush tool and we click, nothing's really going to happen. So the first thing we have to do is set a target. And um, since I already made a background copy, I'm not going to make another copy for this one. Uh, to set a target, you can press or hold the Option or Alt key, and your cursor will change to crosshairs. I'll zoom in when I do that so you can see it. So there's a little blemish there. If I change the cursor to Option or Alt, you can see it, it becomes crosshairs, and you can select a location to pull the good pixels from. And so if I want to replace this part of the image right here where the blemish is, I probably want to choose something close to it since it will have the same shades of pink and peach and etc. And so I'm just going to click over here where I feel like there's good pixels. And now as I move my cursor, I'm going to put it over the teeth so you can see it. The cursor is loaded with the pixels from the target area. And so if I was to click right now, it would try to merge the the pixels on my cursor from the target area with the background and it did it really subtly it changed the texture of the tooth when I did that and so if we do it over the area with the blemish you can see that it will remove the blemish by blending the bad pixels where the blemish is with the new pixels um, or the good pixels that were set by the target area let's do it again for these other two imperfections so there's an imperfection on her cheek too and so we want to reset our target area you don't want to use the same target area over and over again and so I just want to pick an area that's close to this that might be similar. Maybe it's up and to the left a little bit. And so that's my target area. And if I move my cursor, you can see it's loaded. This time it's uh, a little bit more pale pink than the previous one. And if I click over the top of the blemish, it disappears. It's working because I'm choosing good areas. If I chose a bad area, if I chose her hair, and I try to blend it over the blemish, it won't always work and if we zoom in you can see that it's noticeable where that change happened and so when I want to replace an area I'm going to choose something really close to it that I deem as good and then replace it over the top and then the last one here is the little blemish on the side of her face and so we can press and hold the option or the alt key and maybe I'll grab these pixels up here and click over it and you can see if we zoom out here that all the blemishes are removed from her face I'm going to jump back to the slideshow and keep going. The patch tool is another option for doing exactly what we've been doing with the spot healing brush and the patch tool. It just works a little bit differently. You can kind of see better what's going to happen. And the steps that we're going to follow are we're going to duplicate our layer and probably you're probably sick of hearing that. We always want to practice non-destructive editing. 
you're going to select the patch tool. There's a typo on my slide here. I'll fix that when I'm done recording the video. Uh, then you need to make a selection of the area. So you have to have the patch tool selected first. And then you'll make a selection of the area you wish to repair. It's just a rough selection. Pretend like you're using the lasso tool. It works similar to that. And so you want to select the area that's bad. And then when you make that selection, from inside the selection, you're going to click and drag. And as you do that, the background of your image is going to move into the selection. And you'll just keep moving around until the good area that you want to blend with your bad area is literally sitting over the selection. And that probably sounds weird, but let me show you what that looks like. And so we're, we want to remove her wrinkles. We want her to look younger. And so I made just a rough selection of the, the creases under her eye. And when I made the selection, you can see that it just looks like there's wrinkles. But from within the selection, I clicked and I dragged until I got a smooth piece of skin that's sitting on top of her eye. And it looks really funny. But once I let go, it's going to blend the new pixels with the old pixels. And you're going to end up with something like this that looks a little bit more realistic than the previous version. But it's still not that great. Um, depending on where you pull the skin from in this example, it might not be as subtle. But look what happens on the last example when I lower the opacity to 42%. It looks incredibly um, natural, but it looks much better than the original. Notice the original has deep grooves in the wrinkles. And then this one just looks a little bit more subtle than it would have been um, by leaving the wrinkles the way they were. And so if we jump back to Photoshop, we can quickly repeat this for our image with this lady here. And so let's zoom in on the area that we're going to modify. The patch tool is another one of those tools that is probably not going to be on the surface of your tools panel. So you're going to push and hold at the bottom of your tools panel and then choose the patch tool. With the patch tool selected, um, again I'm not duplicating my layer because I'm still in that same document that I've already duplicated the background. You're going to make a selection and I would err on the side of smaller selections not bigger ones. And so maybe I want to get rid of all of the wrinkles all the way down the side of her face here. When I use the tool, I'm going to have to click and drag, and I'm going to have to find an area of her face that would, would match with all of these different parts. And you can see, because I did too big of an area, it didn't do such a great job. And so what you want to do is do it in steps. And so instead of trying to tackle everything at once, let's go back to the patch tool here. Do smaller areas first, and so maybe I'm just going to try to get rid of these wrinkles right here first. And so now I have a small area. From within the selection with the patch tool, you're going to click and drag. And I'm going to drag down, and you should see um, her cheek come up into the area. And my selection is moving. And so let's move it over here so you can see it. And so I still have my cursor selected. I'm not going to lift my cursor yet. But as I drag around, whatever's inside the selection that I'm moving is what is going to appear on her cheek. And so I want to go over to an area that kind of matches what is already there but is smooth because that will help me remove the wrinkles and so maybe I want to grab her forehead because her forehead has peachy and pink textures to it but it's smooth and so when I let go it's going to blend the pixels from the forehead with the pixels from her eye and it looks much better if I zoom out you really can't tell that I manipulated it too much but if you look closely you can tell it's a little funny and so one additional step that I would take is I always will lower the opacity on my change layer. And so if you just look at her eye here, you can see that's the original. And then the eye is more subtle. I might even go even lower on the opacity for the eye because everybody has wrinkles. You don't want to make people look completely smooth or they'll look kind of plastic and artificial-like. 